Today we are going to study the regional security complex theory. The theory was developed by Barry Buzan and Oli Weaver. So the regional security complex theory is attributed to the Copenhagen School of International Security Studies. The regional security complex theory focuses on the regional level of analysis. So it focuses on security at that particular level. The regional level of analysis mediates between the international and domestic levels of analysis. You may recall that in their attempt to deepen the concept of security after the end of the Cold War, the Copenhagen School uh, of uh, International Security Studies developed or developed the regional or added the regional level to the existing three levels of analysis. Uh, back to uh, the theory itself, uh, regional security complex theory was first developed by Barry Buzan in his famous book issued in 1991, People, States and Fear. Later on, it was modified by him and his uh, colleague um, at uh, the Copenhagen School, Oli Weaver, um, by uh, uh, adding the securitization model to the theory. Uh, and uh, as a matter of fact, the modified uh, regional security complex is defined through a securitization model now. This lecture is structured into the following parts. In the first part of lecture, we are going to discuss levels of analysis in international relations. Tim Schwartz introduced three levels of analysis to international relations uh, in 1969, including the international level, the state or domestic level, and the individual. Barry Poussin and his colleagues with the Copenhagen School of International Security Studies introduced a fourth level of analysis, which is the region. Here, region for the first time appeared as a semi system or a separate unit of analysis. Or using our own terms in studying security, referent as uh, regions between uh, referent objects. The second uh, issue to be discussed in this class would be the definition of regional security complex and the meaning variables and indicators included in uh, a regional security context, <coughs> the four indicators of variables. Geography or geographical proximity, anarchic system, power polarity, and security interdependence. But because security interdependence is the crucial element in defining the information of a regional security complex, we will set a separate discussion uh, for, uh, for security interdependence refers simply to security interactions between member states of a region, member states of a regional security complex. Right? These 
in that action. Maybe one of two points or both. Friendship or enmity, hostility or enmity. This would affect the formation of a regional security complex as we uh, explained it. Then I will give you some examples of regional security complex, uh, complexes. Uh, I would refer to, I would like to refer to the Middle East, the European Union, and in your reading, you've got a third example, the uh, South Asia Regional Security Complex. But what we will, we are going to set a separate discussion of the Middle East as a regional security complex. And I want to demonstrate how the, or how to apply the four indicators of a regional security complex to the Middle East, including geographical proximity, an ethnic system, power quality, and security in the The last issue to be discussed in this class is the case of insulated states, those states who don't belong to any regional security complex, and how insulated states are different from buffer states. So, what a regional security complex? According to Buzan and Weber, a regional security complex refers to a set of units or a group of states. These states belong to a specific region in the world, so they share something in common, which, which is geographical proximity. But most important, these, group, uh, these states experience Processes of securitization, desecretization, or both. But these processes of securitization and desecretization are interlinked. This means that the security problems or security issues in, uh, within that group of states cannot be analyzed or resolved from one another. This is what uh, Buzan and Weber uh, uh, call uh, security in between. So now this, we've got a group of, st of states who have some security problems, but um, in order to handle these security problems, these states must work together in handling these uh, problems. Uh, later on, or according to uh, four variables, uh, I'll, explain, uh, uh, I'll explain them in a minute. Uh, Barry Buzan and Weber divided the world into nine different uh, regional security companies and each has its exclusive members because the states don't exist states don't exist in two regional security complexes or overlap from one to another for example we refer to the middle east as a regional security complex and the uh, west europe as another uh, regional security complex uh, complex uh, south asia as a regional security complex, but here you have to pay attention to the fact that one state 
cannot exist in two regional security conflicts or cannot uh, overlap from uh, a regional security complex to an Based on the previous definition, a regional security conflict includes four variables or four in, uh, indicators, including geography or geographical proximity, the analytic system, power polarity, and security interdependence. With regard to geography or geographical proximity, a regional security complex refers to a group of states belong to a geographical region. So, geographical proximity is a necessary but not sufficient condition for forming a regional security uh, 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 complex. The second indicator or variable in the theory uh, uh, of regional security complex is that the analytic system. So, uh, like the international system, like the regional system, energy, energy is the root. So, it means there is no final or central power or government that put rules and enforce rules on states within the region. Right? And the third indicator which is power polarity, refers to how many major states or major powers that exert power in the region. Here, um, Cousin and Weber borrowed the idea of power polarity from uh, new realism and adopted it to the regional level. So here, within region uh, or within a region, uh, or within regional security complex, we can talk about um, bipolar regional system, or unipolar regional system, or multipolar regional system. The fourth uh, variable or indicator of a regional security complex is security interdependence. Security interdependence refers to patterns of interactions among the ones. These interactions could uh, uh, refer to uh, entity or entity. So they may refer or they may uh, include friendship or hostility. Right? This is what uh, they uh, meant by entity and uh, uh, entity. Among the four variables that define a regional security complex, security interdependence is crucial in, for, in defining and forming regional security complex. Why? Because, you remember, uh, Bozen and Weber define regional security complex through the processes of Securitization and desecretization. And the processes of securitization or desecretization uh, need securitizing actors, which are here in our level of analysis, the regional level of analysis, are states who belong to the region. Right? So, this, uh, uh, th these processes of Securitization and desecretization creates interdependence, security interdependence between states. This security interdependence between states is taking the form of patterns of friendship or enmity between states, enmity and enmity uh, between uh, 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 states. So now we've got these uh, units 
or this state which belong to a specific region. Now that they have interactions, security interactions between each other, these security interactions may be uh, show friendship, enmity, or hostility, so enmity. Regarding to enmity, there are different types uh, of, of pattern of enmity ranging from alive and friendship to protection and support with regard to, with regard to uh, the pattern of enmity they also resulted from fear and suspicion among secretization actors and are ranging from you know just uh, from hostile statements and tensions all the way to uh, declaring a total uh, war. Battery of enmity and enmity play, therefore, a significant role in defining security a security complex. So, in a regional security complex where pattern of enmity or friendship prevail, so we can call this regional security complex as a security community. In contrast, when the uh, pattern of enmity prevails in uh, a specific regional security conflict, so this will end up being a conflict uh, formation. As a matter of fact, Zen and Weaver compared between, in, in this respect, they compared between the EU as a regional security complex and the Middle East as a regional security uh, complex. And they concluded that, you know, the uh, pattern of enmity uh, prevails in the Middle East. So, um, it, uh, 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 it, uh, it is an example of a conflict, conflict formation. Uh, in, on, uh, uh, in contrast, pattern of enmity prevailed in the European Union, so we've got a security community in uh, the European uh, Union regional security uh, uh, complex. So now, what are the factors that contribute to the construction of pattern, patterns of enmity and enmity? I mean, here, Buzan and Weber discussed many factors, including history, common culture, and even the uh, examine the impact of geographical proximity on uh, on uh, conflict and cooperation between uh, states. To wrap up here, regional security conflict is defined by different patterns of security interdependence. This is, for instance, the European Union uh, regional security complex is defined as security community since the pattern of enmity prevails in the security complex, whereas the Middle East is defined as conflict formation because pattern of enmity prevails. As I mentioned before, Bojan and Weber, depending on their definition of a regional security complex, divided the world into nine different regional security complexes. For example, they talked about the Middle East regional security complex, the South Asian regional security complex, the EU regional security complex, the East Asia regional security complex, and so on and so forth. But 
they uh, here stress uh, another or a new a new idea which is yes security threats or security concerns don't travel between regions or between regional security complex since each uh, regional security complex has its own special or distinctive security con concerns and security issues but you know what we can have some sort of, of interaction between regional security complex this is what Kuzan uh, and River called it later intra-regional complex for example in Asia there is closer security interaction between South Asia regional security complex and the East Asian regional security complex to such a state that you know uh, Bojan was about to uh, say you know the two regional security complex may get merged into uh, one uh, in the future Let's examine the Middle East as a regional security complex. We have here to apply the four variables or indicators of a regional security complex provided by Kuzan and Weber to the Middle East. If we started by geography, so what are the units or states that belong to the Middle East? Well, in terms of geography, the Middle East as a matter of fact, is will be found. So, um, the Arab countries in North Africa and, uh, and uh, Asia belong to the Middle East. In addition to Iran, Pakistan, Israel, and, and Turkey. So, there is no problem in the geographical definition of the Middle East except uh, for a little problem. When we consider whether Turkey belongs to the Middle East uh, security complex or not, which will be discussed uh, in a minute. The second indicator, which is anarchic system, the Middle East, as a matter of fact, is so anarchic. And, but all regional security complexes, including the European Union regional security complexes, complex are anarchic. So, uh, so what this, what would distinguish the Middle East as a regional security complex? Well, in uh, some regional security complex or in some regions, uh, states conclude or reach some sort of security arrangement or develop joint uh, defense structure to in order to reduce the consequences of uh, an active system. But in the Middle East, there are there is no such arrangement or uh, joint uh, defense structure in the region. So, the Middle East regional security conflict is so anarchic. In terms of power polarity, there is difference between scholars um, whether the Middle East regional security conflict is uh, a multipolar or a unipolar or a bipolar uh, regional uh, system. The group of scholars who uh, say that the Middle East is a multipolar system refer to Turkey, Israel, Iran, Egypt, and Saudi Arabia as the main regional uh, powers in that region. But some actually want to see, uh, some exclude Egypt because they, they say Saudi Arabia Saudi Arabia now is, um, is risen to the status of uh, regional power at the expense of uh, uh, Egypt. Um, some would say no, it is, it is, uh, there is no Arab country included in the uh, multipolar system of the Middle East. Uh, 
as the main regional power are only Turkey, Iran, and Israel. I mean, there is difference here on assessing the regional polarity in the Middle East, but the majority uh, of scholars would say um, it is a multipolar system, but they differ on two uh, issues. First, whether to include an Arab country in the main regional powers or not. The second, whether to include Egypt in the mouth in the regional the regional powers or not. When it comes to security interdependence, which is the force and the most important variable in uh, defining and forming a regional security complex, um, um, Hussein and Weber uh, concluded that there is some sort of negative interdependence between uh, actors in the Middle East, and this uh, type of negative interdependence are, uh, uh, is the result of many factors like Ethnicity, religion, and oil uh, reserves. In the handout, you will find out, you know, uh, here's an explanation of how, for example, ethnicity contributes to the neg negative interdependence between the states in the Middle East, as the Middle East actually, you know, includes many and different ethnic groups, including, including, including the Arabs the Kurds, the Turks, the Persian, the Jews, and, uh, and, and others, and, uh, and, uh, and others. Um, uh, also because Buzan and uh, Weber actually studied uh, the Middle East as a case study uh, in their, when they developed uh, their theory uh, of regional security complex, they uh, said, Within the Middle East regional security complex, we've got three sub complexes. The Levant regional security or sub complex, the Gulf, I mean the GCC country in addition to Iraq and Iran, and the Maghreb, uh, 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 Morocco, Tunisia, Algeria, in addition uh, to Mauritania and The last issue highlighted by Buzan and Weber in their uh, theory of regional security complex is this, the case of insulated states. And insulated states isolate uh, regions. And insulated state does not belong to any regional security complex, but separate between uh, two uh, different regional security complex. Take, for example, Afghanistan. Afghanistan is separating between two distinct uh, regional security complexes, uh, South Asia and the Middle East. So now uh, the security concerns prevailing uh, either in the Middle East or in South Asia uh, do not concern Afghanistan, because Afghanistan is not part of either of either the Middle East or South Asia as a regional security complex. But an insulated state is different from a buffer state, because here a buffer state is located within a regional security complex, but it separates between two regional powers that uh, have you know, some hostile interactions between them or uh, 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 that have uh, history of intensive uh, uh, hostile or negative uh, interactions between uh, them. For example, Belgium is a buffer state and always has been a buffer state between France and Germany. But at the same time, the three of them, France, Germany, and Belgium belong to the uh, 
we know it belongs to West Europe uh, regional security uh, complex. Now to the question of Turkey, whether Turkey belongs to the Middle East or to the uh, European Union uh, regional security complex. As a matter of fact, uh, Turkey before the uh, coming to power of the uh, Erdogan and his party, the Justice and Development Party in uh, 2003, uh, Turkey used to be an insulator state, separating two uh, re regional security complexes, the Middle East and the uh, West Europe or the European Union uh, uh, regional security uh, complex. But because of the recent development in Turkish foreign policy and now uh, Turkish foreign policy and the Erdogan actually, now it, uh, it becomes more involved in the Middle East affairs. Now Turkey now is fighting in Syria uh, and is involved uh, uh, in the Libyan conflict and the uh, Mediterranean uh, gas uh, conflict and uh, it involved in hostile interaction with Egypt and other uh, countries in the Middle East. So now Turkey, after uh, the restructuring of its foreign policy under the Sudan, uh, has become, Turkey now, ha Turkey has become a uh, part or a member of the Middle East regional security complex and not an insulated state anymore. Uh, to wrap up the regional security complex theory focuses on the regional level of analysis. Here, regions for the first time appears as a unit of analysis in international relations and in international security studies. You, we can consider now region, uh, regions as uh, uh, different objects here. Why? Because of the magic term of securitization and desecretization and security interdependence. It's because security interdependence means that security concerns or security threats uh, within uh, a specific region it are, are the joint concern or concern all the units or all the states which belong to that region. The regional security uh, conflict theory is obviously the most comprehensive approach in understanding security at the regional level. However, the theory was criticized uh, 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 particularly about its clear-cut notion of regional states. As you may remember, yes, security interdependence in, is crucial in defining and forming regional security complex, but Buzan and Weber divided the world into nine distinct regional security complex. So, and this was criticized because how come you are saying on the one hand that a uh, regional security complex is based upon the process of securitization that may differ from time to time uh, and of course the process of desecretization which uh, differs from uh, time to time or from a period to a period and on the other hand you are determining or you are now uh, dividing the world into nine different regional security complex based 
que pone yoga o geographical proximity. In fact, the clear-cut notion of regional space in the regional security complex is not a flaw in the theory as criticized because it is based uh, on functionality in terms of security interdependence between states. Because what we've got, this uh, 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 geographical proximity actually contribute to security interdependence between states which belong to the same region. Yes, uh, uh, security interdependence is a crucial element in defining and forming the regional security complex, but uh, regional prox uh, or geographical proximity uh, contribute or uh, contribute to uh, this element of security interdependence. So it is not a flaw. Uh, in the uh, theory uh, 